Hey everybody, I'm here with Kurt McDonald from ServiceNow, and today we're gonna to be talking about document intelligence, the Llama Nemotron Nano VL model that came out, some fantastic work you did on that, and you know where we're going in the future on some of this stuff. So thanks so much for joining. Yeah, I'm really happy to be here, thanks. Yeah, do you wanna explain uh, a little bit about what you do at ServiceNow, document intelligence in general, what that means, um, People will hear terms like OCR, VLMs. Uh, I know that LLMs are all the craze, but there's multimodal nature to some of these things now too. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk about that. It's actually really impressive what, what these models are doing now for these unstructured use cases. And, and that's really where I see multimodal and document intelligence. We've got all of this data, it's in these formats, but we can't use it directly. And even if we pass it into the models, how do we make sure we're getting the right answers? So at, at ServiceNow, our bread and butter is cases, tickets, resolving, and automatically you know, sending the user to the right solution. So we really need to get the right answer out of documents, images, video, audio. In the future, it's going to be every modality. Yeah. And so, I mean, most people, again, if you're not too familiar with the space, might think, okay, but PDFs or whatever, that's, that's text. So yeah. why doesn't an LLM yeah. do the job? Right. It, see, it seems like it should be a solved problem, right? I would just throw the document at the model. The model would look at it and go, I, I know the answer to this. And it turns out it's not so simple. So you have everything from the layout to the images that are embedded within it to whether you're trying to get just a specific answer in the right format to you're trying to synthesize an answer in Q&A style. Like it, it gets actually fairly complicated. And the way we view it is we need to understand it use case by use case. What answer do you need from this document? And it, it varies wildly. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, NVIDIA and ServiceNow has a, a great partnership um, and we continue to develop that. Uh, but my understanding is that there was actually some work involved with even the creation of Llama Nematron Nano VL with ServiceNow. What type of things were you looking for in the space that maybe didn't exist um, from you know existing models, benchmarks, et cetera. Yeah, so I, sh I should first say thanks to NVIDIA for all of this collaboration. It's gone on for years. We've both really benefited from it. And I think what you have here is the strengths of NVIDIA and the strengths of ServiceNow are really complementary. Uh, but we have a domain expertise in enterprise software. You have a domain expertise in the GPU and model training. And together we speak the same language. How do we build and create better models? So you can go all the way back to the April model that was released earlier this year. That was a collaboration between ServiceNow and NVIDIA. And we want to build on that. Uh, my part in this started last year. I ended up working with the NVIDIA team directly, uh, Joey and Padma, and talking about what we're really seeing in the data. And the, the truth is, when we started, we weren't seeing very good results at all. So this back to the, how do I throw a PDF at a model and get a great result? The answer was we, we couldn't, we weren't. We were getting pretty mediocre results. And so we tried to dig into the actual data and look at what's going wrong. How do we train a model that understands this and, and go from there? And that's, that's how we got here. Yeah. And uh, so kind of what we're discussing today is uh, one of the Nemotron models, uh, which is Llama Nemotron Nano VL. It's a post-trained yeah. on Llama 3.1. And uh, the thesis behind the, the Nemotron models, it's an open model family, is uh, we want to give as much to the community as possible so that domain experts like yourself can can build on top of it we release you know the the weights of course but also as much of the data as possible right. uh and we you know believe and hopefully you can confirm this or talk more about what it means to have obviously open source models or open weight models are great uh but how important is having that that data as part of this sort of package uh, when you look at evaluating and actually building on top of a model. Yeah, let, let me put it this way. That's the baseline for how we get engaged. If we don't have that open model approach, there's not much we can do because it's a, if it's a black box and we can't do anything other than just query, get results and evaluate them and maybe do some prompt tuning, we're, we're kind of stuck. So that's why they're where we started. And from there, we wanted to look specifically at how do these checkpoints perform on our data set internally. So at the same time, NVIDIA is creating checkpoints, testing against public benchmarks. We're taking a checkpoint 
and testing it against our internal data. So we have an entire benchmarking framework that we run against every model. So that's our data sets, that's our metrics, that's our special LLM as a judge approach. And we test the frontier models and we test the open models. And what we're looking for is an edge, one where we get just the right size, just the right performance, and that we can then take that internally and build on top of it. So clearly this is already a good start. What got us really excited was just a couple of months ago when we got that checkpoint for the VLM, we saw that it was either meeting or beating frontier models. And I, I think that's really hard to believe. So this was a trust but verify situation for us. So we can test the public benchmarks and they're interesting, but I think what most people will tell you is that public benchmarks don't represent their use case. They just don't. And, and it's interesting and exciting, but as those get saturated, you really need to turn the attention to what is my customer trying to do? What are the results that matter to me? And craft that. So we have an internal data set that's 25,000 Q&A pairs on screenshots and documents all attached to cases and tickets. That's the kind of domain that we really need to see performance on. And so we saw in the traditional metrics, the F1 accuracy, we saw the model was meeting or beating the best models that were out there, both the smaller and the larger ones. And we saw in our LLM as a judge approach, evals that were showing actually a significant step above. And I think that tells you something about the speed at which open models are ac accelerating and delivering great value. Uh, that, that gave us a, I'll say it was a surprise because I think a lot of people tend to think, oh, well, you're just gonna test against frontier model A, B, and C and expect that they're up at the top and maybe there's a few points difference. But that's not what happened. And that gives us the confidence that as we continue this collaboration, as we build on it, we will continue to see that edge grow. Yeah, I mean, uh, beautiful, <laughs> beautifully said, and something that uh, you know you touched on, which I think a lot of people think about these these open source models, um, and there is a lot of value to just being able to run on device data privacy. Uh, but there is kind of, I think, still the notion that, okay, but they're probably not at the frontier of most of these things. Um, and it sounds like what you're saying is actually that that gap, if there's any at all, is continually getting closed. Um, and actually in some specific use cases, especially when you have the ability to, to customize on top of it, then uh, it's not just for efficiency and cost, it's actually for performance as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so why? It's simply data and understanding the use cases, the domain matters. And the same way you might say, well, look, I have this 100 page PDF or I have this natural photo image. They're really different. We need to understand what we need to get out of each of those and build that into our benchmarking set, our training data set, whether it's authentic or synthetic. That's, that's our goal. And I think that's what makes this collaboration so powerful because we do have the leading edge on the open model side and the leading edge in terms of the domain understanding from ServiceNow. Yeah, so I wanna dig a little bit deeper because uh, you, you know it sounds like the motivation to essentially create this uh, new benchmark that mm -hmm. you guys used mm -hmm. um, was that there was there is something missing um, from the, the public benchmarks or maybe it just wasn't applied to your use case uh, specifically. Do you think that the work that you're doing on this benchmark actually can be generalizable that is more indicative of sort of like a real world uh, benchmark yeah. based yeah. on problems. Yeah, so we have two thoughts about how we might approach that and we're gonna explore both. I mean, we need to take every, every path we can possibly take to do, to do this work. So one is, if we look at the whole wide world of public data, there's a lot there that is noise and we need to remove that from our data sets. There's a lot there that is really close to our use cases and we need to in increase our focus on that, increase the number of Q&A pairs that we, we evaluate there and then we also need to take a synthetic data approach. We, we can't just keep trying to go back to the same well, going back to the same public documents and pulling from there. We, we know there's lots out there that is uh, very close to what we're, we're trying to build. We can synthesize a fair amount of that and use that for both benchmarking and training. So we're going we're gonna to do both. Nice. Um, now, of course, just having a benchmark is great, but the reason why you would want to benchmark is because there's the belief that 
if the performance cost, speed, all of that goes mm. up, mm. Uh, that translates to, to real value. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm curious to, for, for not only your customers, also as just like a business value generator, um, what does increasing those three levers do yeah. for ServiceNow and for your customers? Yeah, great. Let's get to why does intelligence matter here? So back to, I've got this unstructured data, I need an answer. That answer could be for you. You're, you're trying to evaluate a case. You're trying to understand what's the problem, how do I solve it? The faster you can do that, the faster you can make your customer happy. The faster you can move on to some other high priority case. The faster you can redirect it to somebody who's the expert. The other way we wanna go is we want to solve as many of these problems automatically as possible. And the only way we can do that is to have an interface between unstructured and structured. So we need those answers. We need them to be very high quality. That's gonna drive workflows that's going to drive the escalation or de-escalation. It's going to drive all the automation that gets us to, we quickly resolve those problems. And that's just on the problem creation side, right? As soon as you get into, what can I do with all this information to anticipate, create better solutions, create better software? We want to do that too. And the, without the great VLM that drives understanding of that data, you're not going to get there. You're just going to be going back to the same small set of structured data that you've, you've looked at before. But in the real world, we have photos, photos of documents. We have videos and images. All of that is what our customers are dealing with. And they don't really want to have to go through many, many steps to structure it themselves. They want us to do it. I think that was the the legacy way almost. And yeah. it still is necessary in some cases. Um, but yeah, it's hard to... It, understand the the value that's almost like trapped in the unstructured data yeah. and uh it's almost like you have to mine the value out yeah. and so that's yeah. where the vlm is that process right yeah. i mean imagine you've got all these this metadata in there dates and 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 totals and amounts and you have tables full of invoice items and you have i mean everything from like an embedded chart where you need to get the actual percentage and now, but you're also comparing it against these internal data. They're inconsistent. There might be two different answers in there and the, you have to help the model understand which one, when is it ambiguous? That's this higher order level of analysis. That's when you get to real thinking, whether the person is doing it or the model is doing the thinking. Absolutely. And you know, you're, you're talking about the problems as they're solved today and you alluded to, you know, where this possibly can go. Um, so you, you've, Benchmark the model; it mm. performed well, and um, to as much detail as you would like to go into, where do you, where do you see ServiceNow's next steps in this partnership and with the model, um, if there is one? Yeah, yeah. So I can only talk about what is sort of public. I want to say we will continue this collaboration with Nvidia, and ServiceNow really wants to build better training data sets as well as better benchmarks. And to the extent that hey, this is something that you and I can verify. We also want to make that public so that others can look at it and improve their workflows and understand how they can contribute back. Because I think that that open approach leads to the rising tide lifts all boats. The more we do that, the more we're going to point directly to these successes and say, this is how you go from a project, which is just amorphous, to here's real results. And I think that's what both NVIDIA and ServiceNow care about, which obviously is why we like working with you. Yeah. At the you talked on going into production, which I yeah. think is the obviously not the first thing on people's mind, but is yeah. the incredibly important part when you start doing anything like this. Yeah. Um, how do you see the the role of of open source and open weight models um, at that step of actually okay, I've got this thing now, I need to productionize it for my environment. Yeah, I mean, I'll say firstly, ServiceNow has had open models in production on customer workloads for years now, and. Considering how recent this LLM explosion is, that tells you a lot. We were not waiting around. We were putting it in, getting problems solved right away and learning from that. So what I see and what my team sees is we want to be very rigorous. We want to look at results. And as we constantly benchmark, really every model that comes out, there's going to be an exec who says, how does that, how does that do? How, how good is this model? And we want to be ready with the results before they, ha they ask that question. But that's just the first step of getting into production because we don't ship one model per use case. 
We ship one model that serves many use cases and we tune within the pipeline to make sure it's getting good results. So that whole process is ongoing, it's continuous, and every model that comes with these significantly better results gets to the head of the leaderboard and then gets into the pipeline for getting into production. So it's really driven by results. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I don't know if you have any calls to action people that you oh. want to send anywhere. Yeah, I would say go check out the models on Hugging Face. I mean, that's, they're they're You're still in my today. call to action. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, look, so come if you're interested in solving this large unstructured data problem, ServiceNow and NVIDIA together can solve it. So, you know, I can call to action from the ServiceNow side and say, know that we're solving this problem as deeply as possible with our own models in our own data center and with NVIDIA models in our own data center. And you know, so there's my call to action. Yeah, I mean, I think it's great also that you're, you're talking about how ServiceNow um, is also essentially looking to, to contribute back to the ecosystem yeah. with a lot of this stuff, because you could just have your own private Q&A data sets and we then could. just keep them and make everything better internally. Yeah, but. yeah so maybe that's, that's, that's what I should call out. Look, there is an internal team building Now LLM. That's our flagship model. And they do great work. That's why they're on stage at Knowledge with Bill and Jensen talking about April. That's why you're going to see more of that kind of work in the future. And I'm, I'm so impressed by them. The, the ServiceNow research team in Montreal, they're building the next generation of technologies that we're going to wrap into our, our pipeline as well. So what I'd say is, you know, think about how these teams are taking their, their core strengths in the business and applying AI and machine learning to it. Amazing. Yeah. If you are interested, the model is on Hugging Face uh, and it's a small model, right? That's where the Nano comes mm -hmm. from, which means it can run on relatively small hardware. And uh, it's got over a million downloads and I think almost a million in the last month, actually. Uh, it's fun to play around with. And so go go build on top of it. Go look at the data. Peep peep under the hood of how this thing thinks and works and how yeah. we created the data as well, um, because we want a, a, a proliferation of these kind of smarter, better models. And if uh, a partner is building on top of them and making them better, then that's that's the dream for what we want to do with the Nemotron family of models. And I think this is probably the, you know, the champion use case right now. So I, I really appreciate you coming on and letting us celebrate the work that you've been doing. Yeah, it's been, it's been super fun. And thanks to NVIDIA and everybody. And actually also to the ServiceNow team for making this all possible. This is a day in, day out, you know, focus for us. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for watching. And as always, if you have any questions uh, to Kurt, we can pass them along. Or you're interested in something that we talked about that you want us to dive into further, uh, leave those in the comment section down below. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you.